In this lesson, we shall focus on WT, W158, calculus, limits, derivatives, integrals, and a lot more. We're getting started right now to solve past exam questions during the course of this lesson. And we proceed as follows. Right, so we're looking at the WT, W158 uh, 2022 exam, multiple choice questions. Each question is worth 1.5 marks. Question one is as follows. Now, the largest interval on which the function f of x equals the square root of x minus 2 minus the square root of 3 minus x is continuous is what? You have the largest the largest interval on which the function is continuous, which is which? Right, so let us look at that one. And to do that one, we need to look at the largest interval. So to get the largest interval, the couple of things you need to take into account. First things first, we realize that we have x minus two, which must be greater or equal to zero simultaneously. 3 minus x is greater than or equal to 0, like so. Okay, because it is continuous whenever the domain of this function is the correct one. Okay, right. At this point, we transpose the 2, and with x is greater than or equal to 2, but simultaneously, it follows then that minus x is greater or equal to minus 3, Upon careful exam, we have this one you divide by minus one, and this one you divide by minus one, which means that x is less or equal to is less or equal to three. Now we take this and we we have a number line here, and uh, we have two. And we have three on the number line, and this is the number line of the values of x. x is greater or equal to two, and you're gonna move in this direction. And we then say, but x is less or equal to three, like so. Upon careful examination, we are then saying, this must be true, and this has to be true. And the conclusion is as follows, that our solution is going to lie between these two extremes. And therefore, we have 2 less or equal to x, less or equal to 3. And this, therefore, is the answer. If you do not want to write the answer like this, you then say x is an element of the closed interval from 2 to 3, like so. And most importantly, we can write right here with only commas. Okay, you see, in school, we write it differently, but at university, we write it differently. Right, our curriculum, that is not, that just, that, you know, our curriculum needs to be restructured very seriously to ensure uniformity in school and university. But you really can see here, the examiner is using commas all the way. But in school, hey, if you use a comma, 2 comma 3 is what? In school, is a decimal. <laughs> okay, in school, 2 comma 3 is a decimal, but here, yeah, this means an interval. So that yeah, the largest interval possible, and therefore the largest interval possible, the correct answer is F. Any question on this one there? Um, yeah, we shall go through a lot wide range of questions, limits and more, functions and what, whatever. Right, any question on this one, um, at Le Hong? No. No question. We proceed. Thank you. Okay, question two is on limits. We have a limit question. So we're given the limit, might be small, but we're just taking from the past exam. So we have the limit as X approaches mm -hmm. negative infinity of arc tangent of so X. Right, let me give you one minute to try this one. Then we discuss together. Right, what do you think is the answer to this question? I'm giving you like one minute. And then we discuss together. Some of this you might have seen. So maybe you'll just remember. But like the answer is this. You know? You'll be like the answer is this. Right. Please let me know when you're done. Okay.
All right. Then we're going to discuss. I'm just going to give the answer anyway. Just going to give the answer. Just will give the answer. Right. Right, 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 right. Right, 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 right. Okay. Please let me know when you're done. Okay. All right, thank you. I know that you, I'm just ambushing you. It's not fair to you because I'm just ambushing you. I'm just bringing these questions, you know, it's not fair. But I know that we're going to discuss in the end. Okay, you're like, okay, I did not even, we did not even expect these questions. You did not. Now I'll be like, okay, now he's asking me these questions. What should I do? Maybe it's too, it's too, it's too tricky. It's too tricky. Okay. I want us to discuss something. Let me know when you're done because I've already given a chance and you might be close and be like, okay, I want to share my answer. You'd be like, I want to share my story. Okay, there's something we call a diagram like this. Okay, I'll share the answer with you because I don't want you to like take too long. Okay. Um. Now, if you have this, because the most I can give with most of these questions are like, it's like a minute, two minutes maximum. All right, so in the end then, there's something we call the, this particular graph here, Okay, please, we are looking at the graph of arc tangent of x. And looking at the graph of arc tangent of x, this is pi over two radians. This is negative pi over two radians. And the graph is actually like so. Okay, why? Because the tangent is an odd function. Right, so... At the point that, for instance, you are um, able to then say um, there are particular given values of x such that you will have certain outputs. Now, this relates to term x equals y. The term x equals y, you know very well that it is undefined at given numbers. What, where is it undefined? Right, you know that at pi over 2, it is certainly um, undefined there. But also at minus pi over 2, it is surely undefined. Okay, so as a consequence then, what we're able to see, but also that at this point for a given x, for a given x value, um, this function is... Um, an odd function. So for a given x value, it is a positive x value here. Um, right, for x positive, y is also positive. Right, at this point, for x negative, y is negative. Right, so because of this, so this is, the, uh, that, that sort of justifies this kind of a pattern. Right, but what happens when x now becomes, you know, negatively infinite. So X now goes haywire and here is X and X approaches negative infinity. You can write like this, makes sense. X approaches negative infinity. So it goes to the negative end of this particular X axis. The question is, what is the answer to this? Right, we're able to see therefore that the answer is gonna be as you approach the negative side, it gets closer and closer to minus pi over two, which is negative pi over two radians. So which one therefore becomes the answer, right? So the answer becomes B. Any question uh, on this one at home? No question. No. All right, that's fine. We move to the next point. Right, we move to the next point. We need to determine the critical numbers, the critical numbers of the function f of x equals the natural log of x minus x. Now, if f of x equals the natural log of x minus x, what are the critical numbers? What are they? 
What are the critical numbers? What are the critical numbers? The critical numbers at this point are obtained as follows. Right, we found them last time and you can do them. So I'm not gonna waste a lot of your time because this is a bit lengthy, but to find the critical numbers, we first find the first derivative. The derivative of the lean of x is one over x, the derivative of minus x is the negative one. The critical numbers, now four critical numbers, For critical numbers, we put the derivative f prime of x, we equate it to what? We equate it to zero, but also we look at where f prime does not exist. Right, so we're gonna look first at one over x minus one equals zero in part one, so we're going to call this one part one, part two. Part one is, is where we have this one, but uh, here this one is one over x equals one, and this means x is one. Right, so now, simultaneously, we're going to be looking at the part where this uh, does not exist, there, where the derivative does not exist, where does it not exist? It does not exist whenever the denominator is it's zero. Right, and the answer, we note that, of course, it's not defined when uh, x is zero, but x equals zero is not, is not in the domain. Remember, we need to find the critical numbers, but x equal to zero is not in the domain, is not in the domain of f, is not in the domain of f, is not in the domain of f. So now, because x equal to zero is on the domain of f means that you're going to pick one, that is a critical number, so that now the only critical number there is c equals one. What is the critical number? It's only c equals one, which is part a. It's only c equals one, which is part a. Any question on these at the hang? No. No question. Move on. No. Right, the equation of the tangent line to y equals x cubed plus 4 in the point where x equals minus 1 is what? Let us find the equation of the tangent line in the point where x equals minus 1. This one is like school. So now we have y equals x cubed plus 4. We have dy dx equals 3x squared. And we want to find the equation of the tangent. The equation of the tangent is dy dx, and this is actually where x equals to minus one. We have three. Okay, three, then we have minus one, you square it. Three minus one, you square it, and the result is what? The result is three. Now, at this point, it means, therefore, we are dealing with what? Okay, we found a slope which is the gradient. And so now we note that there is also y equals minus one cubed plus four, which is exactly three. Now, this passes through, right, so this passes through where x is minus one, y is three which means you have y minus one, m into x minus x one. y minus three equals the gradient three x minus one, like this, which means y equals three x plus three plus three, which means y equals three x plus what? Three x plus six, okay? And y equals 3x plus 6 corresponds to the option B. And therefore, the, the uh, option B is the correct answer to this one. And option B is what gives the correct the correct um, um, equation. So the correct equation is therefore y equals 3x plus 6. Any question? No question. No. All right, good. We move to the next one. Consider the following statements. 
with the natural log ln of ab squared equals two lin a lin b lin three is lin six minus lin two um the lean of interpole x equals one choose the correct answer only statement one is correct only statement two is correct only statement three is correct only statements one and two are correct only statements one and three are correct only statements two and three are correct statements one two and three are correct statements one three and uh one two and three are false what do you think of this one at the home? too easy <laughs> What do you think? I think statement one. No <laughs> statement three. Remember is correct. Okay, yes. Okay, let me write them in big because this this typing was small. So one is like this. It says the lean of A B all squared is two lean A lin b and then two is lin three is the lean of six minus lin two number three says the lean of e to the power x equals what which one is the correct one here your take you're saying something right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so what do you think okay because we're just we're just practicing here but it's too easy right Okay, so this one, first and foremost, I'm going to do it in green color. I've already wrote, written this one. So this one is incorrect. Right, it is incorrect because we know that the lean of AB squared is 2, is 2 lean AB. Right, so if it is 2 lean AB, come on, it is not the same as this. So this one is incorrect. Next. This of number two is correct. Why? It is correct because the lean of six minus the lean of two is the lean of six over two, which is lean three. So this one is correct. Number three, the lean of e to the power x equals one. It's not the case. It's not the case because we know that the lean, so this one is incorrect. Why would this one be incorrect? Okay, so it is incorrect because of a wide range of reasons. It is incorrect because the lean of e to the power x is x lean e, but lean e is one. So that you have by one and this is x. So lean of e to the power x is just x. It's not just one, All right? So we say good. And therefore, the correct answer is what? Right, the correct answer is B. It's B that says only statement two is correct. So indeed, only statement two is correct, but statements one and three are incorrect. Okay, any question, any input here at the hand? Mm. Nothing. <laughs> You're fine. It's too easy. Yeah, fine. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, we are practicing here. Question six. Question six. Consider the following statements. Right, so we have the following statements here. And now I'm going to write them in big. I'm going to write them in big. So we have that number one says that if f of x is 3 lin x, Then f primed is three over x. Okay, if f of x is three in x, then f prime is three out of x. If f of x. is the sign of 3x plus the cosh of, okay, these are the hyperbolic functions. I'm sure you might have seen them. Then the derivative 
of f that is which is f prime of x is three times f of x. Number three says if f of x. Okay, so if f of x. Number three says that if f of x is this one. Then f prime is three and this. So what is then the answer to this? What is then the answer to this? Okay, so the question is consider the following statements. Choose the correct answer. The first one, only statement one is correct. B, only statement two is correct. C, only statement three is correct. D, only statements one and two are correct. E, only statements one and three are correct. F, only statements two and three are correct. G, um, statements one, two, and three are correct. H, statements one, two, and three are false. I hope you're able to see this one at Lehang. Your input, your take on this one. Right. Your take on this one here. Your take on this one. Your take and on this one. Take yes. And one is correct. Still thinking about it? Oh, you think number one is correct, you said. Okay, mm -hmm. you think number one is correct. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, uh, you're not really saying A is correct, but you're saying number one is correct. All right, that's fine. So you mean this one is correct, right? So we'd say number one is correct, not really letter A, right? What about, what do you think about B, uh, no, uh, two? What do you think about number two? Is it correct or not? It's okay, here. Yeah. Please come again. I think it's incorrect. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Okay, so obviously, if you have f of x equals the hyperbolic sine of 3x plus cosh, plus cosh of 3x, then the derivative of this is three times that. So, yeah, you'd say. Let's start with f of x, which is the sine of 3x. The cos of 3x. Then now you'd have f prime of x. The derivative of the hyperbolic sine is what? Is the cos. Mm -hmm. And the derivative of the cos is the hyperbolic sine. But remember that you're going to put three, three there because the angles you need to use the chain rule, right? The derivative of the, the, derivative of, the of the hyperbolic side is the cos, but you put three there. And therefore now three can be taken out as a common factor, giving us the cos of three X plus the hyperbolic sine of three X. Like so, upon careful examination, we can see what is cos three X plus hyperbolic sine, it's F of X. So that indeed it is correct to say f prime of x is that. So this one is also correct. It's mm -hmm. also correct. So now, which means that option two is also correct. Let us look at the uh, at the third one. Right, so the third one. The third one is as follows. Right, so the third one is as follows. Now, in the third case, you're going to actually um, take this function, which is f of x equals e to the power 3x, like that, then we're gonna find the derivative of, um, which is f prime of minus x. So now, what is f of minus x? e to the power minus 3x. f prime of minus x. 
which is actually minus 3e to the minus that. What is e to that? e to the power minus 3x. Right. Okay, because if you have f of x is this one, the derivative is e remains e, and you multiply by the derivative of minus 3x, which is minus 3. Okay? And then right now, you continue to then say, what is e to the power minus 3x? Right, so e to the power minus 3x becomes f of this. Okay, because f of minus x is e to the power minus 3x. What is the answer to this? What is the answer, therefore, to this particular expression here? Simultaneously, you can look at this like as follows and say the following. Let us take a look at it differently and say, one way to look at it is to say, you have f of x equals e to the power three x. What is f prime of x? It is three e to the power three x. That is the derivative. Meaning if you have f prime of minus x, it is three e to the minus three x, which is that three, the e to the power minus three x is exactly um, f of minus x. Right, so meaning that the f prime of this is actually that. So meaning that three is also correct. Okay, so we have three correct ones. Right, so we have that this one is correct, two is correct, and also one is correct. Okay, so meaning therefore, at this point, we have that G is the correct answer. Statements one, two, and three are correct. Statements one, two, and three are correct. Any question here at Lehang? Any input, suggestion? No. No. Okay, good. We try question seven. Please try question seven. I'm giving like two minutes. Maximum time, two minutes. You're right. You close quickly and tell me which one is the answer. Is it A, B, or, you know, something else? And then when you're done, please let us know. Okay. Good, thanks. Right, let us know when you're done. Right. Right, right. You let us know when you're done, and then we can discuss it. We can discuss it. We can discuss it. Why? How far? Okay. Almost done. All right, that's fine. <laughs> You'll forgive me because I'm just not fair to you sometimes. Give you a short time, like very limited time. It's not. It's not the most realistic of things. It's not the most realistic of things.
not the most realistic of things. Right. It's not the most realistic of things. Right. I think that is D. Okay, you think the answer is D. That's fine. We're practicing. If you think the option is D. Right, first things first, we need to evaluate this question, but we evaluate this question, we first take note of the kind of problem we're dealing with, but also we think cautiously. Okay, so if you take the limit here, the square is going to be infinity, and then e to the minus infinity is going to be infinity by 1 over e to the infinity, this one here, which is infinity by 0. And this one is called indeterminate, right? It's an indeterminate form. Now, what is this? The limit. As x approaches infinity of x squared e to the minus x. Mean, means therefore now this limit itself needs to be transformed a little bit and therefore we shall look at the limit as x approaches um, infinity and then we have x squared divided by e to the power x and this gives us the form infinity over infinity this one here and so we're in a position to use L'Hopital right L'Hopital rule will say the derivative of x squared is twice x e to the x in the denominator as x approaches infinity what is the result here as a matter of fact right it is still infinity over infinity we proceed with the differentiation process getting 2 divided by e to the power x and as a consequence what then we're getting here is that we there have exactly the result. What is the result? Right. So the result becomes 2 divided by infinity. And this is what? It's 0. The correct answer is option A. Any question, input, or suggestion there, Akihan? What do you think of this? Hmm. A bit strange. <laughs> All right. Can you not evaluate using graphs? Yes, you can use graphs, yeah. Mm. Okay, yeah, if you can use graphs, but the graphs are tricky because what, what would the graph of this one be as, as, as x approaches infinity? So you can sketch your graph, right? Okay, so you can sketch your graph of the function x squared e to the power minus x. Right, if you, yeah, but it's, 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 it's a lot of work to sketch this one because now you need to find the, x, the, the critical values, you need to find the the things um, yeah so i would imagine that is a bit tricky but it can be done i mean if you can sketch the graph yes but your yeah, curve sketching is very very technical in general but it is it is possible yeah if you can have the graph of this that's close enough then you'll be able to see that this graph must approach infinity must approach zero as x approaches infinity okay so that is sort of the realization you're going to make All right. Any comment, any remark before we move to the next one, Natalie Hong? Yeah, we can move to the next one. Thank you. Right, here's another one. Consider the following statement. So we have the domain. Okay, we have the domains. Number one, we're interested in the domain of f of x equals one half to the power x. What is the domain of this? The domain of this, the domain of this. So, okay, here we argue that the domain is this one. Here we argue that the domain is one to infinity. Here we argue that the domain is minus infinity to infinity. The question is which one is correct? Yeah, I know you can use graphs. 
Okay, here we can use some graphs because these graphs are like easy because this is like the exponential function, decreasing exponential, the log function. So yeah, you can use the graphs. But yeah, what do you think of number one first? Let's do it by, okay. But which one maybe you think is the correct answer? Maybe you can do that first. Because A says only statement one is correct. B, only statement two is correct. C, only statement three is correct. D, okay, this is like a section of the exam. Okay, this is like section A of the exam. Um, only statements one and two are correct. E, only statements one and three are correct. F, only statements two and three are correct. G, uh, right, statement one, two, and three are correct. H, statements one, two, and three are false. That was H. That's what H means. What do you think? What's your take on this one? What's your take on this one? Okay. Two. Okay. Right. Two. Too tricky. Okay. No, yeah. you have, okay. You can you can use some graphs. You are thinking of something. What do you think? We discuss it together. Okay. I know that you can get this one right. Yeah. What do you think? Okay, the graph of the exponential function, the first one, right? The graph of one over two to the power x, it's like the graph of this function. Okay, so this one is a decreasing function. So it's like mm -hmm. this, because the graph of y equals two to the power x is increasing like this. If this one is the y, is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, definitely. So the question is, what is the domain? So the domain here would have to be negative infinity to positive infinity, correct? So, yeah, so as a consequence then you're able to see that the first one is incorrect. So in other words, this interval here given is incorrect. What do you think of number two? What is the domain of this one? Would the domain of this one be one to infinity or minus infinity to infinity? Your take, your thoughts here. Yeah. Your take. Okay, it's a tricky one, this one. But you need to just have an idea of the log graph and how the log graph looks like. Okay, if you look at this log graph, how will the graph of this function look like? So, first, you need to imagine the graph of the log, the lean of x. Right, so if you look at the graph of lean x, Okay, this one will be the graph of y equals lin x. Okay, now, if then in mathematics, you perform a transformation of that, and you then say, the x is made negative, you make x negative, what kind of a transformation is this? So if you have a point on the function x, y, and then now you perform another transformation like this, such that the x becomes negative. So what then happens to the overall function? Right, so what happens to the overall function? What kind of a graph is this? It makes a positive x, negative x. It makes positive x, negative x. So this kind of a graph is a reflection in the y. Right, so the graph is gonna be sort of like this. You're going to have a graph that is like that. Okay. Now, if this is true, then now you perform another transformation of the graph. So if this is the graph of the lean of minus x, so what then would be the graph of... <laughs> okay, they said very interesting questions for you guys there. 
and they want to get you guys to think, and, and, and this is very, very brilliant. But then the question is, what is the graph of one minus the lean? Is it not? Um... Your, your take on this one? Okay, because remember, these are like past exam questions, past exam questions. Right. So what would you think is the result of these here? Right, so you'd have exactly that part there. So you'd have that. So now in the end, now you therefore have to transform this graph. So if you look at the graph of this minus x, so the graph of the lean of one minus x is the same as the graph of minus x plus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take this graph of minus x and then plus one. What does plus one do to a graph? But also now you need to realize that this is like a very tricky question. So this is like f of x equals this. So f of x is the is that is the lean of that lean of minus x. So if you want to perform the Transformation here, so this one would have to be, for instance, um, there x minus one. So x minus one is gonna become what? It's gonna become the lean of minus, and then the uh, and the and then the x becomes this. Okay, so look at this one. Look carefully. So that is what you're gonna have. Right, so if you have the lead of one minus x, so now it means therefore you'd have the lead of you multiply by negative here, which is going to be minus x plus one. Okay, I'm saying this because if you want to find the actual thing of the graph, yeah, you, you consider the upper part of this. Okay, so yeah, this performs the kind of transformation of the graph. So if you look at this. It's like this. So this means that you move the graph one unit to the right. Okay, because now this is the graph of uh, the lean of minus x, meaning uh, it cuts here when x is minus one, because when x is minus one, you put it here, it becomes minus one by, it becomes minus times minus one, which is the lean of one. The lean of one is what? The lean of one is zero. Okay, so yeah, so this is the, the, the thing. But now this graph then is gonna move one unit. So it is here now, it's gonna move one unit and it's gonna be sitting here. Okay, so if the graph mm -hmm. is gonna move one unit um, to the right because you're minusing from X, so it's gonna move one unit to the right and then it's gonna be doing something like this. Okay, I'm just using the graph. But the question is, what would the domain of this one be? But look, if it is sitting here, the domain is gonna, okay, if it's sitting here, then the y-axis is an asymptote. The y-axis is an asymptote. But now, if it, which is the line of x equals zero, is an asymptote of the graph. So now, which is x equals zero, if then you move it to this side, which means at this point, there is x equals one. Because if it moves, if the graph moves by one unit, because of the fact that of this one, then it means that the asymptote is gonna move also because it was like one unit away from here, one unit away. So the asymptote is gonna be one unit away. So if you are at the origin here, it's gonna be one unit away. So it's gonna be at one here. So what is that, what, 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 what is the domain of this? So will the domain be from minus infinity to infinity? No, it can't be. Okay, because we're speaking about the domain of this. So what do you think then of this particular question? So, okay, you look at this question and reason, and reason very, very carefully. So in the end, 
would actually be in a position to then say the following. Remember that oh, this question is asking for the range. It's asking for the range. So number three is asking for the range. So indeed, the range is correct. Because it's going to go plus infinity minus infinity. So it's correct. This is the range. So the range is correct. But, uh, okay, but it's, ah, it's asking two, two, two things. The domain and the range. So you are able to see, therefore, that at this point, you think the domain is one to infinity. So the domain cannot be one to infinity because it, this is the graph. So the domain is going to be what? It's going to be from minus infinity to one. Something like this, you know, from minus infinity to one. So which means, therefore, this one is incorrect. Okay, now here's the domain from zero to infinity. The domain from zero to infinity, this one here is also incorrect. So which means, therefore, that number one is incorrect, number two is incorrect, number three is the correct one. So which one is the correct option? It's C. Only statement three is correct. So any question, so the correct option here is, is part C. What do you think here, Akira Hong? What do you think of this question? This is like a past exam question. It was like 2022, but yeah, but I think the guy discussed it in 2023, you know, Brun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you have a suggestion or a question? No. No, thank you so much, Dr. Han. We move to the next point. Okay, have you done integration yet? Yes. Okay. I'm giving you like two minutes. Two minutes quickly. I know you, I mean, you, you're not practicing all, all the time these things, but yeah, you try it and then when you're done, please you let me know and then you can discuss it. Okay. Right, good. Right. Then we discuss it. We discuss it when you're done. You discuss it when you're done. Okay. Right. And then you, you'll share which answer you think is correct. Is it A or B or C or, or D or E or F? You know, you share your input. Yeah. You share your input. It's all practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. Good. And then you'll advise you'll advise us about tomorrow's time. You know, so you let us know on WhatsApp what time is ideal tomorrow. But we can have a two hour lesson. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. The correct, I think the correct answer is D. Okay, that's fine. We take a look. We take a look. We take a look. Right, a couple of things you need to take into account. Now, for us, if the degrees are the same, if the numerator is a higher degree, we perform division. So you're going to say x squared, you divide by x squared plus one. So x squared divided by x squared is one. x squared, and this is x squared plus one, which is this. So you have this one here, which is exactly this. 
soar in the air and we have x squared divided by x squared plus one dx. Right, so which is one um, divided by that one dx. Right, and then now obviously you can perform the integration of the one and then the integration of the x squared plus one dx. And what is the integral of the dx? It's only x minus the integral of one over x squared plus one is the arc tangent. So it is arc tan of x plus c. And therefore the correct answer is x minus arc tan of x plus c. Okay, now. The octan can also be written as the tan to the power negative one of x so that the correct answer is B, x minus x minus octan of x plus C, and that is the correct answer. Any question? Ah, oh, okay. Now, in this instance, we would state a couple of things there at the home. What do we state? We're going to state that to integrate this one here, which is x squared divided by x squared plus one dx, we would have that another student can come and say, we can add one and subtract one from this, and then we have x squared plus one dx, and therefore this is actually x squared plus one over x squared plus one dx minus uh, one over x squared plus one dx. And therefore, this one is the integral of the x minus the integral of this one here plus one dx minus x octan x plus c. Okay. I mean, you can do it without using um, what you call the division algorithm. Right. So in in, in each case, uh, in which case, therefore, the student can use what you call the division algorithm. Okay, the division algorithm or what you call the long division method. Can you use the long division method, but you wish not, let's not use the long division method. Right, so you can use the long division or you can use synthetic division. Right, something called the long, long division, long division method. Right, so can you use the long division method to perform the division? If not, you can just say, oh, in the denominator we have x squared plus one, then what we can do is we can add one to the x squared in the numerator and then subtract a one. And then now you perform separation of this. The x squared plus one divided by x squared plus one produces a one. And then we have minus one divided by x squared plus one dx. And then you get the results. You get the point. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. so any question, any input, any suggestion, Kya Tehong? Anything you want to add or um, remove? No. Nothing. Next question. Okay, let us look at question 10. Question 10 looks so tiny, but it's about vectors. So we're dealing with vectors. Right, now dealing with vectors, a couple of things we take into account. Suppose V bar is the vector with starting point A with coordinates 1, 2, 3, end point B with 3, 6, 7, with length, magnitude of V, Choose the correct option. Right, so, but note that V is a vector with starting point. So the examiner is saying, hang on, there is a vector with starting point this and end point that. Okay, let's do this nicely. Want to have a scheme here and a rough sketch. There is a vector with starting point. What is the starting point? It's one, two, three. What is the end point? The end point is B with the coordinate 367, like so. Now, if this is good news, right, what then is the next step? The examiner is then saying, vector V is the vector like that. So here is vector V. It is the vector with starting point this and end point that with length. Okay, this is the length of the vector. Length of the vector, the magnitude, magnitude of the vector V. Choose the correct option. Which one is the correct option? Is it A, B, C, D, E, F, O, G? Or neither? I'm giving you like two minutes quickly. Right. And then you share your input. You share and be like, okay, 
what is the answer to this? And then we take a look together. And then we take a look together. Right. We take a look together. Right. We take a look together here. Right. So, uh, right. You have two minutes quickly uh, there to finish this one. And then when you're done, please just alert us and then we can help you. Okay, because this is the aim to learn. This is the objective to learn. This is the objective to learn. This is the objective to learn. Right, so. This is the objective to learn. Right, so please advise us here and tell us what is exactly necessary. Right, please. How far? Almost done. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Le Bohong. Uh, actor Hong, excuse me. <laughs> right, so y'all. Right. Right, 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 right. So we have exactly that. We have exactly that. We have exactly I that. I got B. You got B. What did you get B to be the Atle Hong? Oh, you got to be as the answer. Yes. Okay. Good. Let us check together. So first and foremost, you're going to actually be able to look at the vector V. So we would say the vector V is actually from A to B. B is 3, 6, 7. A is 1, 2, 3. You subtract these things here, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. Six minus two is a four. Seven minus three is a four. Then now, we actually, therefore, would be able to get this vector, but it's not the only way to get this vector. So you can all, always do it like that, or you can say um, the vector V it can be seen as a BA, and then if you do BA, it's going to be the negative of this. Right, because you're moving, if you move from B to A, then you would then say A is your is your final point, then you have three, six, seven, and then you would have here one minus three is minus two, two minus six is a minus four, three minus seven is a minus four. There you'd have the length of this. Right. So the length of the vector V is the square root. Right. So it will be Two squared, four squared, four squared. Four plus 16 plus 16. What is 16 plus 16? It's actually 32 plus four is actually 36. And 36 becomes six units. Okay, this gives us the length. So yeah, the correct answer would have to be exactly that one there. So you'd have, okay, yeah. So there are two possible options so far. Either A or B. So the correct answer is going to be exactly what? It's going to be exactly option A. Why? Because strictly speaking, we're moving from A to B so that A is the initial starting point is A. The end point is B. So if you are to look at the vector V from A to B so that B is the final point, two for four. The length is six. The length is six units. So yeah, what is your take here, uh, Atlan? So strictly speaking, the vector A B would be the two for four with length six units. But this one is gonna be in the opposite. It's gonna be like vector B A. We don't love it. We don't love that one. Okay. Yeah, but the correct answer here is going to be exactly that. 
Right, so. You take here, please. Um, right, so we have exactly this here as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. Right. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. So we continue right now to do the next problem. Okay, 11 is the next one. Given H is less or equal to F of X, less or equal to sign X out of 2X, for all X, um, an element of the interval, infinity to zero, union zero to infinity, consider the following statements. If we have that the limit of H of X is two, then their limit of F of X as X tends to zero is two. Okay, yeah. Which one is the correct answer here? I'm giving you like two minutes and then we're gonna discuss it. Like two minutes and then we're gonna discuss it. Okay. Right, good. Good. Right, so we good, we good, we good. So you let us know when you're done and then we're gonna discuss and then mark these particular questions. Remember, this was section A of the exam, and then we have section B of the exam also. We're gonna to discuss today, depending on how our time is gonna go, so we could go, we could do um, like a little bit of this. Right, so yeah, when you're done, please let us know, let us know, let us know, let us know. Let us know. Let us know. Okay. Right. Right. I'm disappointed. Right, so we have exactly that. Right, so we have exactly that. This is the challenge that I was getting when we took care of. Do you know how uncomfortable it would be going if I have to be better? Because I can't allow myself to fail. Right, how far? Almost there. Okay, thank you. Right. Right, so y'all, please let us know what you've done. Let us know when you're done. Your thought, I'm capable of speaking your advice. Okay. All right. Uh, please uh, let us when you're done at your home. Okay, thank you. I know I missed that. Now I have to fix it. 
right I think number three. You is think number three. Okay, let's check quickly. Let's check quickly and see what answer we're getting. If you think number three is the correct one. Right. First things first. We are effectively saying in this particular question here. Um H. So now what kind of a theorem is this? What kind of a theorem is this? Okay. Right. So now, we are then saying, given that this is the case for all x, consider the following statements. So this says the limit of h is, of h of x is 2. Okay, if the limit of h of x is 2, then the limit of f of x uh, is 2. Right, so you're able to see, therefore, that at this point, if you look very, very carefully, um this one would be incorrect right it would be incorrect because if the limit of h of x is 2 um, it would not just mean the limit of this is actually um, 2 as such next point because whatever you have in here is you can use the graphs and say there is the greatest of the functions, which is sine x over 2x. And then you have another one, a little bit little bit below, where f of x is smaller than that one. And then now you have this one here, where h is the smallest of all the functions. Right, h is like the smallest of all of them. So at this point, um, you are actually able to observe that if the limit of this is 2, it, it does not mean that this is actually 2. Now, in the second case, if the limit of h is 1 half, then it would mean the limit of f of x is also 1 half. So that will also be incorrect. It will also be actually incorrect. So in the end then, um, right, so in number three, you'd be saying this limit here. Right, so this limit here. So that would then mean at this point, um, the limit as x tends to zero, of the side of 3x out of x. Okay, yeah, you can use anything. It's actually the limit as x tends to zero. 3x over x. You multiply it by 3 out of 3, which is the limit as x tends to zero of sine 3x on 3x. And this limit here, yeah. Of this one is times one, which becomes three. So indeed, this limit uh, is three there. Yeah. This limit becomes three there. Yeah. Right. So you have exactly this part here as a matter of fact. And strictly speaking, therefore, the correct yeah. option would have to be um C, that is the correct answer. Yeah, what is your suggestion here at the hung? I have no suggestion. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We're discussing, but the, the very correct option would be would be three there. Would be three there. Sarah is okay, good. so we move to the next point. We move to the next point. We move to the next point. Try number 12. I hope you're able to see it. It is the limit as x approaches infinity of 8x cubed. And just writing big, 
5 x squared plus 2x minus 3. This is divided by 1 minus 2x cubed. Right, so look at this and think. Look at this and think. I know this one is going to do it very quickly. Right, so that in this, yeah. Right, so please let us know when you're done. Right. Right. I got the answer to be negative four. You got the answer to be negative four. Fair well done to you, and that gives option one. That's the correct one? A. Well done. Yeah, that is brilliant stuff. So that would actually be the correct answer. So the correct answer in this case is exactly the fourth one. And therefore, uh, the correct answer is exactly number no, uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a, it's a. All right, so we're good. Because now to do this one, you would have the limit as x approaches infinity. You divide by the highest degree, which is x cubed, which is eight plus five out of x plus two out of x squared minus three out of x cubed. Everything is divided by one over x cubed minus two. Right, as x approaches infinity, these things are going to be 0, 0, 0. And then you have 8 divided by minus 2, which is what? A minus 4. Okay, so the consequence then, you saw right there, Clehan, and therefore the correct option would have to be, to be A. So the correct option is A, which is actually minus 4. Okay, so it leads to the next point. We move to the next point. All right. See now? Okay. Now, section B is about the evaluation of this. Evaluate the integral by interpreting in terms of areas. So if you look at the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 plus the square root of 9 minus x squared dx, what do you think is the correct answer to this? Please try it. And then when you're done, you let us know and then we'll discuss it. Now we are starting like section B of the exam. Okay, we're discussing just some integration techniques. Just some integration techniques. Right, just some integration techniques. Just some integration techniques. Just some integration techniques. And then please, when you're done, I'll let us and say, hang on. I am done, 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 and then we'll discuss it together. We will okay. go through it, y'all, together. We are just discussing these things, and then we shall be, you know, discussing, 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 
discussing, discussing, discussing. Discussing, discussing, discussing. Right. Let us know what you done. Oh my god, Right now I'm asking this is the first time and then you know that's really I got the answer to be three. Okay, got the answer to be three. That's awesome. That's fine. Let's take a look. We gotta take a look and see what we have here. We gotta actually uh take a look and see what we get. Right. So now with the concept of using areas, um, we have the following. Um, we have the following. Okay, now the couple of things that are very, very central to our discussion here, and what are the central things to our discussion? They're the fact that you need to evaluate this particular integral using the notion of areas, but also the notion of areas is a very, very important notion. So what is that you're going to take into account? It is the fact that if you have this, you can draw a diagram like this, and then you can look at the graph like this, and then now you can look at this here, and then uh, be in a position to um, have the following, and be in a position to have the following. So at, at this point, this one is negative three, and this one is three. This is the y-axis, and this remains the x-axis like so. Okay, now, if this becomes exactly true, this would be the graph of y equals the square root, which is the upper half of a full circle because if you have a circle like this it is exactly this one with x squared plus y squared equals nine and therefore now if you have this now this is y and this is x okay if this is true what then are you able to do out of this what then you're able to do out of this is that between minus three and three um this would be the, the the you know the drawing of the circle upper upper hemisphere of this uh, of this circle and then now but we're gonna cut it also now we're gonna focus on x right x is gonna be between what and what right so x is gonna be between zero and three right so x is gonna be between zero and three meaning that you're gonna focus on this part on this part. And then if you focus on that part, um, what therefore would the area of this one here be? Right, so that means the, the integral from zero to three of one plus the square root of nine minus x squared dx is equal to so it would mean therefore the integral of this would be given as follows. If then you are dealing with this particular integral here between zero and three, right, you would then be in a position to then say for x between zero and three, if you have the function y equals one because this is going to be like three as well so there is like y equals one 
Right. So if you have y equals one, and now you are looking at this particular area here, you'd be able to see that this is one, one. And therefore, using areas, you'd be able to see that this is like, you know, length by breadth. So you can be able to see that it is three by one, like a rectangle, length by breadth. And then you'll be able to add that to the remaining part of the area. Okay. So if you agree, therefore, at this point, that this here becomes like a quarter circle. So it becomes a quarter circle because a full circle like this is one, two, three, four parts. Now, if you consider this is like a quarter, which is one quarter pi, the radius is three squared. And therefore, this is actually three plus nine pi out of four. Okay, and this is the answer. But this one you can write four by three. So you can write as nine pi plus four by three. It's 12 divided by four. Okay, so this one becomes the answer to the question. And it is uh, obviously now, this is giving us areas and therefore the areas themselves define something very, very important. And we have what you call square units. Square units. Any question, any input, any suggestion on this, Atahang? Any suggestion? No. On this? Uh, All right, good. So we proceed right now to the next point. We proceed right now to the next point. Right, so um, in the next case, uh, we analyze uh, the next question. What is the next question? Let's check. Find the derivative of the given function. Do not simplify your answer. Okay, obviously this might be looking small to you, but uh, f of x is equal to e to the power x lin x. So f of x is e to the power x lin x. Please do this one quickly. I know it's easy. I know it's easy. Right. So when you're done, please let us know. Okay. Right, good. Done, please let us know. I got the answer. Okay, what do you think the answer is? Please read it out. E to the x lin x plus 1 over x times e to the x. Good, well done, well done. So f prime of x is e to the x lin x. So first, first find the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x lin x plus e to the x times 1 over x. Okay. Like this. And therefore, and this obviously becomes the answer. But yeah, do not simplify your answer so you can leave your answer in this form. It's very enough. You can even put some parentheses around here. And therefore, your answer is exactly that one. Any question? Okay. 
question. Okay. This one, try it, please. And then we're going to discuss it. Okay. Okay, good. Right. Right, your take, please. Right, your take. Right. Right. I got negative sign into cos x plus cos into negative sign x. F prime would be first, we find the derivative of the cosine, this one here, and its derivative is minus sign, and we leave the interior like that. We multiply the derivative of cosine x, which is minus sine x minus the sine of cosine x. If primed, is sine x sine x Right, so it's an accent that okay, yeah. So um 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 okay, obviously you don't need to simplify your answer. In which case, therefore, you can leave your answer in uh in, in, in any of the forms that um have actually been obtained, but you can write your answer exactly like so. Right, so yeah. Any question here? No question, right? Too easy. Mm -hmm. Too easy. Right, let's look at the next one. C. Try C, please, and then let us know when you're done. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Please let us know when you're done. Okay. Good. Okay. 
Right, so you let us know, please, when you're done. Okay. All right, thanks. I got the answer to be two at ten X. Okay. Please come again. I got the answer to be two at ten X. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So obviously to do this particular problem, there are a couple of things we need to do. First things first, we can be able to see that this function f of x can be written as what? Can be written as 1 divided by x plus 1 to the power 1 half, which is x squared plus 1 to the minus 1 half, which means the derivative is minus 1 half x squared plus 1 minus 3 out of 2, and therefore the derivative becomes exactly what? Becomes exactly uh, 2x there. So you can write it like this. And remember, it is the derivative, and therefore um, it can be written like that. But yeah, you do not need to do a lot of simplifications, but 2 cancels 2, giving us negative x divided by x squared plus 1 to the power 3 out of 2. Right, so the, this becomes the answer. Okay, so this becomes the answer. Any question, input, or suggestions uh, uh, at your home? No. Okay, that's fine. We proceed right now to the next point. Right, so we proceed right now to the next point. And the next point is this one here. Take the values of x, value of values of x, such that the vectors um, are orthogonal vectors. So please try that question and then let us know what you've done, please. Right, so try that question and let us know when you're done. Okay. 
Okay. And let us know when you're done. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Please let us know when you're done. Okay. All right. So How far? Almost done. Okay, thank you. 
What do you think the answer is there, Atlehong? How far? Most close. All right, that's okay. Right, as you're close to the answer, we are interested in the answer. Right, we want to know what the answer is to the question um, so that we are able to know in the exam what to do to solve these particular questions here. This is very, very important. Okay, it's extremely important for us to take note of these. Right, it's very, very important for us to take note of this. Right, it's very important for us to take note of this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, it's very important for us to take note of this. Right. Um, so, um, right, so please think about it. And then when you're done, you let us know that, hang on, I'm done. And right now, then we can discuss exactly what needs to happen here. What needs to happen here. Okay. Right. How far to hang? All right. I suppose it to be done by now. Okay, so obviously um, we need to recall that if two vectors are orthogonal, two vectors A and B are orthogonal, it actually means, therefore, that the vector A, the dot product of the vector A with the vector B is zero. So this is sort of the fundamental definition of what you call orthogonal vectors, okay? So two vectors are orthogonal if the vector A together with the vector B is zero. So in other words, we can proceed to then let vector A be the 2x4, an x like this, and uh, we have simultaneously the vector B, which is 3, 2, together with x. Now, so let A and B be that. Then we can be able to note that the dot product is 0, so that uh, we have 2x4 together with x, 
dot three two x uh, is zero two x times three is six x right so we have actually here six x and then four by two would give us exactly uh, eight and then x by x gives us x squared equals zero and this is x squared plus six x plus eight equals zero and so we are able to find this, the x and x. So that now you actually need to find the uh, the product here. Right. So the factors here are exactly four and two. You put a plus and a plus, which means x is minus four or x is minus two. So this becomes uh, the result. So the question was. Um, you need to find uh, the value of values of x, and therefore we're able to see that uh, therefore x is minus 4, or x is what? x is minus 2, and these become the answers. So any question here, um, 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 Akraham? Yeah. Any question on this? Anything you would like uh, a hint about? Anything you do not understand very well? Um, that you wish to understand pertaining the uh, the notion of uh, a set of vectors that are orthogonal. So two vectors remain orthogonal under certain conditions, right? Yeah. Under the condition that the dot product of the vectors becomes exactly zero. Now this zero here becomes a number and it does not is not a vector. So it becomes a, a scalar in this case. So it's something you need to take uh, into account as a matter of fact and move forward with the questions. We move on to the next point. Remember, we're looking at past, past exam questions here. Right, the next question is this integral. So we're given the integral of the cosine of the natural log of t divided by t dt, try this one quickly, please, as soon as you're done with this particular exercise, let us uh, know so that we can discuss the solution together. We are looking at this section here, and this section is a section on what to call integration. It's a section on what to call integration. Right, please, uh, try this quickly, uh, let us, as soon as you're done, and we can discuss uh, the um, the calculations, the steps, et cetera, et cetera, of this particular uh, question. Okay. okay. Right. All right. Okay. So you let us know when you're done, please. You let us know when you're done. Okay. All right. Let us know when you're done. Okay. Right, we're looking at this section on integration. And this is a part of calculus we call integration or it is also called integral calculus. It's called the Integral, integral calculus. It's called integral calculus. It is called integral calculus. Right, we are looking at integral calculus. 
we are looking at integral calculus right very very interesting part of the curriculum here integral calculus right integral calculus Right. How far? At your home. Okay, I got a sign into line of T. Okay, that's fine. We're practicing here. You got sign into the line of T. And that is the correct answer. Congratulations there at your home. So obvious to do this particular question, the couple of things we take into account. And what do we do? We let. We let you be lean T. So we let you be lean T so that du is one over T dt. Right, this becomes the integral of the cosine. Now at this point, we're able to make the observation that lean T is u divided by T. What is dt? T du. T D U it's D T. So T D U is the T T cancels, giving us the cosine of U D U and therefore this is the sine of U plus C. Um so which means that it is lin T plus C. It is lin T plus C. Right, so that is what you got as the answer, correct. Right, so yeah, well done there for having obtained the correct answer there. Let us move to the next question. Okay, now the next one is this one here, B. Here we are facing the integral of x over x squared plus one dx. Please try this one quickly and let us know when you're done. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, right. Right, so let us know, please, when you're done. Let us know when you're done. Right, so you let us know when you're done. Simply let us know when you're done. I got one over two at 10 X. Okay, that's fine. We are practicing and take a look at how we do some of the questions. We're going to spend a lot more time on some of these things. We let you. We let u be x squared plus 1. Simultaneously, du becomes 2x dx. The integral of x, x squared plus 1 dx is x divided. What is x squared plus 1? It is u dx is du over 2x. 1 over 2. 1 over u du, which is the lean of u, 
plus uh, C, the linear, because the integral of the one over u is lin u, and therefore the u is x squared plus one, plus C. And therefore this here becomes the integral, the integral, which is uh, the one half, the lean of x squared plus one. Any question? So that is the answer. Think about it. Make sure you understand. But once again, I mean, we are discussing here. We're going to send you the recording at the end of our discussion. Okay. And then you can watch the recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there are some questions we're going to give you as homework. Not a lot. Because the aim is not to break you down. We want to build you up. We don't want, we don't want to break you down. We want to build you up. Right, we want to build you up. We want to build you up. We want to build you up. Okay, you're done, right? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, this one was encircled in red ink and whatnot. Okay, somebody put some red ink on it, but it's okay. Right, we have this particular integral of three to the power t, the second squared of three to the power t, dt. Okay, that's interesting that the dt was cut out of this. Yeah. Okay, so if this one, please do it. We have like two minutes. Okay. Yeah, when you're done, let us know. I got the answer to be tan into three to the power t. It's very, very close to that. Very close to that. So, but obvious at this point, the couple of things we need to take into account is the fact that we must remove this one. So we let u. We let u be three to the power t. Then we proceed to find du dt. What is the derivative of this one? Right, the derivative of this one is the same as what? Is the same as three to the power t lin three, like this. Okay, so this becomes the derivative of the three to the power t because the base is a constant. So we do not just use the power rule here. We use the chain rule. So the chain rule gives us this. And then at this point, we have du, which is three to the power t lin three, dt, meaning the integral of three to the power t 
the second squared of three to the power t dt is the integral of three to the power t, which is six squared. Um, which is now dt is du divided by it is du divided by three to the t in three. So we divide this here and you have one over in three. One over in three, and then you have here the second square of u, du, right? And this is one over in three, like this. What is the integral of the second of u? This is the 10 u plus c, which is one over in three, the tangent. What is the u? Is three to the t plus c. Right, so that in the end then we have the following to say that this integral here is one over the natural log of three, the tangent of three to the t plus c. Any question, any remark, any input on this one here? No. No question, we move to the next one. Right, the equation of a sphere is x squared plus y uh, plus y squared plus z squared equals six x minus four y minus ten z. The center of the sphere is what? Two minutes. Okay, please let me know when you're done. Okay. All right. Please. Let me know when you're done. Right. Let us know when you're done. Okay. Right. 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 So, y'all. Yeah. We're interested in the center of the sphere. I hope the question is clear. Is it correct? Clear? Yes. Okay, yeah. Because we just given x squared plus y squared plus z squared is six x minus four y minus 10 z. Okay, and then let us know the answer. Let us know of the answer. I got the answer to be six minus four and positive 10. Okay, that's fine. So now, first and foremost, we must do some grouping like x squared minus six x. So we put the x's together. And then we have y squared plus 4y. You move this minus 4y to the other side, becomes positive. z squared plus 10z. Zero. We have moved all the other terms there. And then the next thing is we have x squared minus 6x. We take half the coefficient. So we have minus 6, we half it, and we square that. But whatever we do here, we must also do this side. y squared plus 4y. So you have here 4 over 2 squared, and then you also add here 4 over 2 squared. 
And then you also have the z squared with 10z, 10 over 2 squared, and then you also have 10 over 2 squared, which means you have x minus 3, you square for this one, become the perfect square. For the y terms, you're dealing with this. For the x's, you're dealing with that. For the y terms, you're dealing with y plus 2, all squared like this. For the z terms, you're dealing with z plus 5, you square this. Okay, because if you square all the z plus 5 all squared, it becomes this. Right, here you have minus, you have minus 64 by 2, becoming, becoming a 3, and you have a 9. 4, 25. Uh, so you have y plus 2 squared. So yeah, you have 9 plus 4, 13. 13 plus 15? What is it exactly? It is exactly a 38. Right, we have 38. What is the center? Right, we're able to see therefore that the center is 3, negative 2, negative 5. 3, negative 2, negative 5. So to get the center, then you're able to realize that we just take the opposites of this because in general, the center of x minus a squared, y minus b squared, z minus c squared equals the r squared. So we have the abc, like abc. So the actual center becomes like abc. So at this point, it's going to be 3 minus 2 minus 5. So what is the center? The center is 3 minus 2 minus 5, like so. And this is the answer. Where's the question? Any question on this? Right, so this is, okay, no question. Right, remember that the recording is going to be sent to you. The next point. What is the radius, the radius of this phase one? Please find the radius quickly. What is the radius? What is the radius of the sphere? What is the radius of the sphere? Is it not root? Please come here. 38. The square root of 38. Good. Because you saw that we had x minus 3 squared y plus 2 all squared z plus 5 all squared equals 38. Giving us radius. Right. The radius becomes the square root of 38 uh, units. Right, become the square root of the eight unit. So, what is the radius of the sphere? It is actually exactly uh, the square root of 38 units. There, any question? Obviously, I'm sure that you're able to understand that one, right? Yes, all right. So, yeah, it was awesome, awesome having a discussion together this moment. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna send you the recording of this, and then uh, we shall discuss again tomorrow. Uh, you'll advise us on WhatsApp. If we can use the same time as today, or you know, you can always change to um, another time slot. Okay. Any question? Any input? No. Okay, nothing. Right. From us, it was awesome having a discussion with you today, Akahong. Right. And we keep in, in touch for tomorrow. You will keep us posted about the time that's best tomorrow for you, uh, for us to have our, our other lesson. But yeah, um, it was wonderful having this discussion. Um, have yourself a very awesome, awesome afternoon and goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.